have previous pictures that, that show otherwise. Uh, even if that was the coma, that's 50,000 kilometers in diameter, okay? Um, if that, if that was, even if that was the coma and not the actual object itself, then how can it be 3,100 kilometers now? Or 3,100 miles or whatever it says here, right? How can that be? They're, they're going against themselves here. They're, they're making it, they're making this easier for me to prove. How can it be 3,100 miles when their previous picture at 5.5 AU said it was 50,000 miles? Uh. And again, I was complaining that if they were getting shots every 15 minutes of Hubble, from Hubble, why aren't we getting more? Well, what I wanted to do was find the images that they used to make this composite. Now, when they overlaid this, they smoothed a lot of edges out. Is, was that the purpose? To make it look like one object, guys? Is that what they're doing? I want to dig a little deeper here. Yeah, those were they and those did. images were in July. Let's go back to April. And everybody remembers this big blue image here. And they say that the contrast image computer processed was produced from photos of Comet Einstein taken by NASA Hubble Space Telescope when the comet was 386 million miles from the sun. Notice how smooth it looks. They pixelated it in very well. Yeah. They... So you don't see what's under here. Exactly. Bear with me here. They now, before they, I break that picture down, I want to go to the last image of my last video. That this area. was from uh, Bruce Carey right in Arizona from his two telescopes in the backyard. This was his 11-inch uh, mead. Now, let's pull it up closer than we have before. And I just I increased the resolution to try to knock out some pixelation. You can't. Now, well, you can't tell much about that. There's no way to argue if there's one object, two objects, it's just too pixelated as I bring this back down. Even in different color changes, you cannot tell. It almost appears there's two objects, right? Well, anybody could say that. Hold on. Now, I found the three images that they used to make this picture. And now I think I know why. We'll pull this over. This is the black and white one. This is from the red filter and the green filter here. I'm going to pull this black and white up, guys. Just hang in there a minute. To, uh, see what we got. Now, without the overlay and what they've added in, you can see what's inside this comet or inside this uh, coma, coma haze here. You have three objects. And this is not an object behind these two. You see how this cloud is irregular. This will not be happening. I'm going to show you the other two images that they used to make that. Let's take a look at this red filter. You can see two objects in the red filter there. Let's look at the green. Now, in the green one, let's pull that up. Now, I'm going to show you a tool on some of these images that's available if you know where to find it. I will put a link to it. Now this is what's called the Hubble Web Viewer and I'm going to put it up after I load the video. You can't put links in the description until after the video is loaded so sometimes it takes about 10 minutes to get that information under it. But uh, this is called an iSign Web Viewer or Image web image viewer and uh, you notice uh, the numbers here as you move your cursor around it gives you where you're at. You see that? Now, it also has what's called invert, darker, and lighter. You notice how they've got it real bright. Now, this is the released image here. And at this sun, this star, appears to be having a solar flare, or coronal mass ejection out the side. But let's try to get it. Let's just uh, darken this thing a couple of times. And again, I'm going to link this. 
you notice that it's starting to clear up. It was overexposed, the one that was released. Here's eye sign. Here's your coronal mass ejection. That's what's inside that coma. Now, that looks like a comet. This, I don't know, but again, it's part of this cloud. We'll pull it up. You can also zoom, and it will zoom very big. One more time. Now, let's go back to, let's go to light. Let's blur it out the way that it was when you go to the page. As we lighten it up, it's just increasing your uh, exposure time, basically. Watch what happens to it. You still see that uh, oblong shape inside that coma? There's about the way we get it. Now we're going to go back dark. Right there. Now remember that one scientist said some of the jets are not pointed right. Are they, is that a, is that what we're looking at here, guys? Something's just not right. You, I would say this was some kind of marker or something if it was not for this cloud. Pull it up. Let's look at it close. This is the real image of what's inside that cloud. I'm gonna go darker. You tell me. I don't know. Heads up. Well, Neptune's atmosphere is primarily composed of gases, hydrate of the gases hydrogen, helium, and methane that will boil at very low temperature. Take a look at the very early photograph at a range of 5.5 AU, kept out of the MSM of the mainstream media. Okay. Note this photograph was taken close to the record for the furthest away comet ever detected. The scale at 5.5 AU indicates it's 50,000 kilometers in diameter, the same as Neptune. And we all remember this photograph. I'm sure if you see my previous video, you know what this is. This is comment C2012 ISON, S1 ISON, taken in January 13th. This is ISON. 30 arc seconds is the measurement given. And this is about half that. So it's about 15 arc seconds in diameter, which makes it 50,000 kilometers. Okay? Gives it a diameter of 50,000 kilometers, four times Earth's diameter. Scale, 30 arc seconds. And it has moons and trash, and that's a pretty big moon. Okay? So how can it be in this? This is also NASA's photograph, by the way, and they're the ones that give us a scale of 30 arc seconds. Okay? That makes us 50,000 kilometers in diameter. And now what? And all of a sudden, now what? It shrank. Now it's no longer 50,000 kilometers, but now it is 3,100 miles. Right? Okay. Let's continue. Now, the internal structure of Neptune is as follows. Uh, upper atmosphere, top clouds. Okay. Uh, atmosphere consisting of hydrogen, helium, methane gas. Um, mantle consisting of water, ammonia, and methane ices. Okay. And a core consisting of rock, silicates, and nickel iron. Now we have a working model of what ISON is, and we can make some assumptions on what its effect on uh, the solar system will be. Okay. It is unprecedentedly massive as far as traditional comets go, but not the worst case scenario as a solid sphere of silicate iron would be. Uh, its silicon iron core will be at, at the order of maybe 1.2 times 
the mass of Earth. The most dangerous aspect is its retinue. Um, Neptune has 12 known irregular shaped moons and spherical, uh, and one spherical, Triton. Uh, it's 20, that's 2,706 kilometers in diameter, orbiting at approximately 355,000 kilometers from Neptune. There is no danger of Ison or any of its large moons impacting Earth based on its current orbit, which is extremely unlikely to change um, by any substantial degree, unless the huge coma and tail take on a solar sail or electrical uh, effect that introduces non-gravitational forces. The smaller moons and trash collected from the Kuiper belt and the asteroid belt are another story. They will be in chaotic orbits, and no doubt the military supercomputers are crunching away and trying to model any potential Earth colliders. The current meteor storm affecting Earth will get much worse. As it moves in, um, the frigid outer layers will stream out, uh, increasing the volume of the coma and tail. Sudden and dramatic outbursts are expected as the layers of its hot internal structure boil away into the coma and tail until the solid core remains for perigee. It will perturb Mars's orbit slightly, but a rough calculation on gravitational force between it and Mars gives a scalar value approximately 1% of the force between the Sun and Mars, so it won't be towing Mars away, as some have speculated. However, um, that this is this is all guesswork from here on because we have no actual data. So I'm making a best guess. Its electrical and magnetic uh, effects uh, on the planets will be unprecedented. Neptune has a quadpolar magnetic field, and isons will be as strong or stronger as its internal uh, dynamo is energized by close proximity to the sun. It may very well produce the kill shot CME. This is Dave with Endgame beginning at www.com. I've got some news here I want to put out. I'm sure a few people have heard of this, but I just kind of want to make my.